This video is brought to you by my awesome sponsors. Make sure to check out the affiliate links in the description below. Thanks again for all the support. Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Matt and welcome to Circuit Superstars. Yes, Circuit Superstars, as we all know, has been released on PC, PS4, Xbox One, PS5, Xbox Series S and X. But weirdly enough, not Nintendo Switch until now. So please enjoy Circuit Superstars on the Switch. Finally, you can play this game on the go. So we're going to go to Grand Prix. We're going to go to Touring Car Championship. Go to Amateur because we haven't completed anything else yet. And let us begin. So Circuit Superstars, as everybody knows, or for most know, uh, was released back in, I want to say, 2021 for Steam, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and semi-recently in the past year or so, released on PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series S and X. So this game's been on a multitude of platforms. And of course, as you can tell, is a kind of fun Simcade, actually, a top-down racing game. And with this art style, it's very reminiscent of Art of Rally, it's very, I don't know, it's, it's, I like it. I really do. I, I love this kind of art style, this kind of low polygon-ish, almost, art style. And it's, I did not expect to play as much of it. I'll be honest. I did not expect to play this as much as I did when it first came out. But when it first came out, it was just like, oh my God, this is amazing. Because it like, it could run on basically any computer. It could run on pretty much any device or at least gaming console. But there's always just this little voice in the back of our head that said, you know, this would have been really great on Nintendo Switch. So the Steam Deck came out in 2021, I want to say, and I got mine in October 22. And the first thing that I did when I booted up the Steam Deck was make sure I had Circuit Superstars installed because, you know, for whatever reason, I've fallen in love with top-down racing games a really long time ago and I just got to try all sorts of them one the one that really really set me on this path was Drift Mania for it was WiiWare for the Nintendo Wii so there's always that comparison in my mind like subconsciously to Drift Mania and I think this game is in some cases even better because it really instead of being such like a goofy game it has that that love and appreciation for motorsport. Like, you can definitely tell the love and the passion that was poured into this game. And to this day, I still, like, if people say, what's your top five racing games that you have to install on your computer? Like, number two or three is this. Like, hands down, I absolutely recommend it to everybody that I can. And because it is newly released on Nintendo Switch, I want to say it's got a 15% off sale. So it's like only 15 or 16 bucks right now. And oh my goodness, you have to, have to, have to pick it up. But if you're watching this video, you kind of already assumed that I would say that or already have because you're watching this video. So some of you may remember is actually part of the marketing materials for this game when it was first coming out is that they actually used some fairly famous internet personalities and actually some famous uh, actual real world racing drivers. Uh, you know, they had this this whole top gear test track kind of time attack where they had, as you can tell, uh, Roman Grosjean, Sam Bird, Jimmy Broadbent, Super GT, Lando Norris, Jamie Chadwick, Connor Daly, all set their own times and you too can race against them in this little time attack, see if you can beat any of them. Now, what was interesting is because they used the top tier get test track, they are actually, being original Fire games, were able to get kind of like a partnership deal with the BBC's Top Gear. And as this game was just released on Nintendo Switch, you can actually buy DLC on any of the consoles, including Switch, the Top Gear Stig Challenge. And I'm going to be honest, I am not quite sure what this all entails, but from what the what the little basic description was, is play through some of the most iconic moments in Top Gear history. With the release of two new cars, 
One being the Reliance Robin. That looks like the space shuttle. And then the, oh, what was it? The Toyota Hilux, which was the indestructible pickup truck. So I'm very excited to play through those. So let's start with the destroying a car challenge. As we are now racing as Tubular. So here we are, the famous or infamous Top Gear test track. Now let's begin. And oh, wow. <laughs> okay. So we have movable walls. Trying not to... Uh... <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> wow. Okay, I am really struggling here as it turns out. Oh, oh. and we've got these big old wrecking balls. So we got to cover up and go around this corner here. And we have caravans falling from the sky. <laughs> oh, you can tell that original fire games had a lot of fun with this. And I imagine these are landmines. Oh. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> oh, this is a great fun. Ow. <laughs> yeah, this car is definitely dead at this point. Don't want to. There we go. So we've got whatever this is. So I'll just kind of slip on through there and got the rotating beams and across the line ow <laughs> so let's try that again at a uh, speed I'm hoping this first part of the track in my mind is probably the most difficult Because these cars uh, handling is, in some cases, a little bit floaty. So trying to get a very precise... Yeah, let's just floor it here. Yeah, so trying to get a very precise... Yeah, there we go. Just, just floor it through this. <laughs> I mean, it's not the best time, but I mean, it's better than what I was doing. And better than a 132. Ow. There we go. A 110.722. I don't need to do much more than that. <laughs> so then let's try Skate Park. As the... Our wonderful touring car championship car that we just uh, played as not too long ago here. So once again, we are on the Top Gear Tets track with lots of ramps. And, uh, my goodness. Oh, what is that? So we're apparently doing this a little bit, uh, differently than the traditional track. Oh, but what is this? <laughs> Oh no! Come on! Oh no! Ah, oh, bummer. Let's try that again. Well, thankfully, hitting the walls or anything like that is not a uh, penalty on your time in any way, shape, or form. Especially hitting these cones. I just need to go as fast as I can here. Oh no! 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 Oh man! I mean, that works. <laughs> Perfect. So then we go on through here. Where are we going? Oh, what is this? <laughs> How am I supposed to get up there? <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Uh, floor it, I guess. No. Oh, uh, this is going to be a problem. <sighs> okay, never mind. <laughs> so after seeing both Skate Park and Destroying a Car, I think you guys can kind of deduce what the rest of this DLC is going to be. Uh, the Autocross Challenge is just the Top Gear Test Track with some cones. 
Uh, the Dog Agility course is the Top Gear test track with some ramps, uh, destroying a car you saw, and uh, Full is the Top Gear test track with the Euro truck. <sighs> so at this moment, I wanted to kind of address the elephant in the room, which was... So we are paying an additional $7 for five new Top Gear test track time attack challenges. And again, when we saw the developers talking about it in their Discord and whatnot, they had said that they're working on a DLC. They were still working on the Switch port. And... I'm going to be honest, with all this being said, I'm a little bit disappointed because I feel like it's a little bit too little too late. As many of you probably saw, you know, if, if you did follow or original fire games all the way back when, all the way back when, I, I do recall them having like some really cool screenshots of like a Monaco-esque kind of French Riviera, like these ruins or this really European kind of coastal city area and I thought that was honestly super cool and as the game gets released the track isn't there so it's like I'm kind of curious whatever happened to it and the other thing that I was kind of curious about as well is that the developers have been talking about for for quite some time. It's like, hey, we're you know working on the Switch port. We're working on the Switch version. You know, you know, keep patient and whatnot. Originally, it was slated for 2022, and then when that kind of came and went, you know, people were asking, well, what's going on? And there wasn't really much communication there. And then we get these uh, roadmap posts about, hey, you know, we're working on X, Y, and Z. This is what our hopes are going forward. And you'd see the Switch release would be coming, you know, next quarter. And the quarter would come and go, and we're still kind of questioning, so where is it? So in my mind, if they somehow, some way, were able to get this game released back in, you know, 2020 or 2021 for the Switch, I think they would have sold not hundreds but more than thousands if not maybe even millions of copies for the switch because the switch just doesn't have that many great racing games i mean we've got grid autosport which is like an eight-year-old game now we've got need for speed hot pursuit remastered which is a remastered version of a 12-year-old game 13 actually and yes we've got the gear club uh, series but those have never really seemed to go sell all that well so I mean the Switch has just got this huge hole of where these you know really good racing games that are occupying other consoles could could have been released on the Switch and just due to the Switch's you know lack of hardware None of that really came to fruition, so the Circuit Superstars seemed like a perfect fit for the Switch. But here we are, three years after release. And we finally got it, and this long awaited DLC is just more Top Gear Time Attack challenges, which, I mean, some people might enjoy. <laughs> But I definitely would have enjoyed, you know, some more tracks. I would have enjoyed more usable cars, I guess. I don't know. It's just, I think because it's gone on for so long that due to original fire games, lack of communication, it just kind of left so much to be, it left the fans to kind of discuss what they wanted. And I imagine that a lot of our assumptions and a lot of our wishes and desires were a lot more than reality. So yes, I am superbly happy that Circuit Superstars is finally on Switch. But we're so late in the Switch life cycle, I, I 
honestly think that at some point the developers probably had to start questioning, you know, do we just start developing this for the Switch 2 or whatever the next, you know, Nintendo hardware is coming out, which hopefully we're going to hear about it later this year. Yes, there are still games that are coming out on Switch, like Tears of the Kingdom. That's going to sell really well or has sold really well. But that's more for the hardcore Switch base. If you were able to capitalize on the casual base that came with uh, Animal Crossing New Horizons during the pandemic, in my mind, this game would have sold incredibly well. But again, that's that's kind of like a what if, what if, and that didn't happen. So, Circuit Superstars on Nintendo Switch. I'm both excited and a bit disappointed. Excited because I can finally play this game on the go. You know, I did have to technically buy a Steam Deck to be able to do that sooner, but to be able to bring this to other people's houses, throw it in their Switch docks, play it up on the TV, probably use like the, um, the Joy-Cons and just be able to race one another. Awesome. Super excited to be able to finally do that. It's about two years too late in my mind. So, you know, I understand that the original Fire Games is a very small scale studio. I understand that, you know, they've had a lot of other things on their minds, you know, making that DLC. But it just seems like that they didn't have the manpower to be able to, to get the Switch port done as soon as ideally what it should have been. The good news is, is through all the communication that they've sent out, that they are currently working on a new game, whether that be racing related or something completely off the wall, who knows? But I am very excited to see what they've got coming up here. So uh, if you guys enjoy this content, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. We've got some more content coming on up. Uh, Need for Speed Volume 3 for Need for Speed Unbound has finally been released earlier this week. I might do a video on that next week. Uh, Grand Turismo 7 has some new news. The Ford Roadster is finally back in the legendary car dealership. And uh, Toyota had released a press statement stating that the GR Corolla is coming, ver making its virtual debut to Grand Turismo 7. So I imagine we'll see uh, the GR Corolla and a couple of other new cars coming to uh, the next update in Grand Turismo 7. So again, stay tuned for all of that. Again, thanks so much for watching. Hope you guys have a great day today. Take care. Bye.